At this point, it's kind of old news that inflation has been causing affordability issues across the United States. And when the news talks about affordability issues, it feels like they're always using Phoenix as the prime example, particularly when they're talking about the affordability crisis with housing. So we know there was crazy growth in the past couple of years here in Phoenix, but today in 2023, what is the real cost of living? Would you actually enjoy life here or is it going to be stressful trying to make ends meet? And today, we're we're not just going to look at housing. We're going to look at the day-to-day -day costs and expenses. So we're going to look at utilities. Perhaps you have kids. We'll look at childcare, transportation, food, going out. Now, whether Phoenix is affordable really depends on your specific needs and circumstances. So I will be as honest as possible in providing accurate numbers of what's going on today. I'm Courtney, your local Phoenix realtor, and I'm here to help. So if you have questions, even if it's not about buying a house, reach out. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about are utilities. This is actually the expense I get asked most frequently about just because it gets so hot here and people are worried about what that electric bill is going to look like in the summer when you're cranking up your AC. Now I am going to be talking about numbers in a moment here, but I do want to point out there are several factors that can impact your electric bill. So your month to month costs can vary widely. So things that can impact your electric bill, of course, your square footage of your home, how large is your home? Is it one or two stories? Heat likes to rise, so it can be more expensive to cool down that second story. Do you have single pane glass? Are you closing your blinds when the sun's beaming in? And of course, what temperature are you keeping your thermostat at? And also a newer AC unit is most likely going to be more efficient and you're probably gonna save some money. Now, the two main electrical companies that we have, it's SRP, and APS. During the winter, you aren't gonna be using near as much electric, so it's not uncommon for a single family home to have a bill of, you know, $70, $80. Now, as for the summer electric bill, I did take a survey and I found that a lot of people were paying around 200, a little over 200. Some people who were more conservative were able to pay around 170. However, I did talk to a few people who had larger homes and they were cranking up the AC and, it got up to like 475 a month. So you have to be conscientious if you want to keep that electrical bill down for sure. So for my home, it's about 1600 square feet. And during the summer, we're usually paying around 175. Now we keep our thermostat um, usually between the low and the mid seventies. Now, hang on, if you are from either the East Coast or the Midwest, a more humid area, you might be shocked and think that's really high. But I would say that's actually more on the cool end here just because it's so dry when the interior of your home is like 73 degrees it feels way cooler than like let's say you're on the east coast and have your thermostat set at 73. now because we have so much fluctuation with our electrical bills between the winter and the summer months srp and aps do have options that you can actually even out your payments throughout the year so you're paying pretty much exactly the same every month we also have peak hours um, and this changes slightly seasonally so basically if your ac is jacked up during these hours or maybe you're using a lot of your appliances during this time Time, it is going to be more expensive. So a lot of times people do try to complete like their laundry and cooking during these off peak hours just to save a little bit more money. So, and I'll actually put the link below just talking about peak hours so you can see how this might impact your electrical bill. Now let's talk about the other utilities, water, sewer, and garbage. So all of these together, I pay about $75 a month. And again, when I did a survey, I found that most people were paying about 75 to $120 a month. And this really depended on if they had grass or not and if they were watering their lawn. Also a pool will slightly impact that as well. Why we are on the topic of pools, I do wanna bring up that pools can be very much an unexpected cost for people. It can be quite a bit of time to actually manage your pools so many people actually hire a pool maintenance person to come to their home. And this can range, it's $100 to $200 a month. But on top of that, more often than not, there are a lot of things that you have to do to upkeep your pool and maintain your pool. And this can be several thousand dollars a year. So just keep that in mind when you're buying a house. Um, if you aren't ready to put that money into your pool, maybe look for a home that doesn't have a pool. And maybe look for a neighborhood that has a community pool instead, or do what I 
I do and go to a friend's house that has a pool. <laughs> and I do want to put in a note about solar. Okay, so Arizona, we have 300 days of sunshine a year and it seems like the perfect place to have solar. Surprisingly, it's not used as much as I would have anticipated. So solar can be very expensive. More often than not, people will have some sort of financing option with it or they will do a lease. But there's a couple problems with this. If you are considering getting solar, just be fully aware that it can make it very difficult to sell your house down the road. Unfortunately, the majority of people do not see the value of solar. Despite what the salesmen say, it really doesn't save you that much money initially. So if you have solar financed or lease on your home, when you sell that home, the buyer takes over that lease or that financing. So that can be several extra hundred dollars a month for them. So a lot of buyers will see a solar lease and they will run the opposite direction. All right, let's talk about food, groceries, restaurants. So of course, grocery bills are gonna vary greatly depending on the size of your family, where you shop, what type of food you eat. The best way to compare it is actually comparing it to the national average or other cities. So this is one of the areas that Phoenix is actually a good amount cheaper than the national average, approximately 3% below the national average. As far as grocery stores, Fry's is our main grocery store, but Phoenix is huge. We have pretty much every grocery store you could think of. We have Costco, Trader Joe's, Sprouts, Whole Foods, of course. And then we actually have our own bougie fine food <laughs> grocery store called AJ's Fine Foods. Fry's grocery store, you can find eggs for about $2.99 a dozen. Milk is gonna be about $3.89. Something I would advise you to do if you're wondering what your monthly grocery bill would actually look like, I would go to their website and actually create a cart of what your typical groceries are for a week and see what that comes up to. And I'll put the link below so you can see this if this is something that you wanna check out. As far as going out to eat, we do have some very fancy high-end restaurants, particularly more in the Scottsdale area. However, if you're going to a fast food place like In-N-Out or or Chick-fil-A, you're probably spending about seven to $8 for a meal. If you're going to more of just a regular restaurant that's not super bougie, probably gonna be paying between 15 and $20 for an entree. There are some restaurants that are a little bit cheaper than this, but I would say more often than not, you're probably paying around that range. As far as adult beverages, I would say a beer, like a craft beer at a brewery, six to $8. A cocktail, somewhere between 10 and $15. But I will say across Phoenix Metro, there are tons of great happy hour deals. So there are ways to get around this and not pay this amount for a drink. Now we're gonna talk about transportation. Okay, so the one thing that is kind of a bummer about Phoenix is we don't have great public transportation. We do have one light rail or metro rail that goes from Phoenix out to Mesa, but I mean, that's only a small portion of Phoenix Metro. So very few people can actually rely on that for their commute. So we do have a bus system, but basically you do need a car to get around here. That is the main mode of transportation. For gas right now, we're between 469, 489 is what I'm seeing around today in 2023. And something to consider if you are thinking about your monthly expenses with gas is that Phoenix is geographically is a very large region. So depending on if you have to commute for work or maybe you're dropping your kids to school across town, just keep in mind the distance because it might not look that large on a map, but it's actually quite big. We do have a great HOV or carpool lane. So keep that in mind too. If there is any way that you can carpool with other people, we do have a plethora of ride shares, Ubers and Lyfts available pretty much whenever, wherever you are. It's very convenient in that regard compared to some smaller areas that I've lived in before. As far as price, so I live in Gilbert right now. And when I looked up to go to the airport during non-peak hours, it was about $35 and it's about 15 miles away from me. During peak Peak hours, it was about $45. If you're looking for more of a local short ride, that's probably going to cost you about $10 to $20, um, just depending on the location of where you're at. So if you're like in downtown Phoenix, it's gonna be a little bit more. And of course, is it during one of those surge charge times? 
All right, now we're gonna talk about childcare and education. If you're looking for an in-home babysitter, on average, you're probably gonna be paying in the low 20s. Now, depending on the credentials of the babysitter or nanny, you could be paying up to 30, $35. Um, I wouldn't say this is a norm, but I have heard certain circumstances where people were paying this amount. As far as daycare or a child care center, this is going to fluctuate significantly between different suburbs of Phoenix. But overall, the average is probably going to be $800 to $1,200 a month for a child. It can be more expensive for sure, um, but I would say across the city, that's the average that I'm that we're seeing. I realize this is quite expensive, particularly if you have more than one child. There are some approved home daycare services as well that I know are a little bit less expensive. And also, depending on your income and circumstances, Arizona does have some grants and some financial assistance programs too that can help out parents. Okay, so Arizona is not known for the best public school system. I really don't like telling people that, but you know, it is the truth. We do have a good charter school system that is tuition free, but if you are looking to send your child to a private school, um, that can start anywhere from like seven to $8,000 a year, and it can go all the way up to Brophy College Preparatory is actually $19,000 a year, which is almost twice the amount of Arizona State University. Now let's shift to something a little bit more financially positive, and this is income taxes. So last year and the years prior, taxes actually fluctuated depending on your income, but we had some very recent changes to the state of Arizona. So for the 2023 year, so taxes that will be filed in April, 2024, we are having a flat tax rate of 2.5%. Okay. so. I I know we're not Nevada with a 0%, but considering where most people are moving from, the states where people are moving from, this is going to be quite a lower tax rate. What's even better than income taxes are our property taxes. So we have incredibly low property taxes here in Arizona. There's a lot going into this to figure out what this number is. I'm not going to bore you today, but when you actually break down the numbers, most people are only paying a few hundred dollars a month on taxes. For the median home purchase price in 2023, your taxes are probably gonna be around $200 a month. So if you're coming from California or Chicago, even Texas, this is probably gonna sound quite delightful. Let's talk about what most often comes up in the media, and that is housing here in Phoenix. Historically, Phoenix was regarded as this very affordable place to live. Um, however, in the past few years, home prices have gone through the roof. When you look at the median income compared to the median home price, and then you take that and compare it to other cities in the United States, Phoenix is actually doing below average. Now we are still doing much better than a lot of cities in California or even like Seattle. However, the houses aren't near as affordable as they were historically. So if you're buying a home, the home price is gonna change drastically depending on which area of Phoenix you're in. I mean, if you're in Paradise Valley, it's full of these million dollar homes, multi-million dollar homes. But if you're willing to go further on the outskirts of the city, let's say Buckeye, you're going to find a slightly cheaper home. So the median home price right now today in 2023 is $433,000. However, like I said, there are some sub markets that are going to be about $50,000 cheaper. Uh, Buckeye is a good example, Maricopa as well. As far as renting, it's the same thing. It really yes depends on what part of Phoenix you're in. So right now the median rent is $2,200. The median for apartment is about $1,500 where a single family home is going Going to be about $2,300. So when we're talking about cost of living, the most challenging part for sure is housing. However, there are a lot of areas within the city that are much more affordable. I did have another video that I made. You can check it out right here. And it talks about some of my favorite areas that does have more affordable rentals and homes to buy. And if you need any help finding either affordable housing or navigating your move down here to Arizona, please reach out. I'm here to help. And again, thank you so much for your time and I hope you have a fantastic day.